What's up, y'all? Got a banger from the wall. Let's get straight into it. If you're a yes person, like you just always say yes to everything, listen up. I was dating this no. guy. No. <laughs> I'm not a yes person. <laughs> I for four years and he proposed to me. Congrats. I said yes. Oh, nice. I was 22, and at that time in my life, I said yes to everything. She's a runner, she's a track star. Let's hope you didn't say yes to everything. If somebody said that this was the career I should go into, I said yes. If someone said this is the religion you need to follow, I said yes. And yeah, sometimes- I'm Sorry, this sounds kind of- Stupid. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I, I was never like a big yes person. Chat, let me know. Were you always just a yes person? Now, I would listen to certain people that were like my mentors or like certain maybe maybe my parent because I was raised by a single mom. But like, I didn't just listen to everybody. Sometimes I didn't say yes out loud, but with my actions, I did say yes. Back to that relationship. I obviously ended up breaking it off. I used to be a touring musician, and after one of my tours, I realized that one of the diamonds in my ring had fallen out. Now, as much as I tried to not take that as a sign that I shouldn't be with this person, I started asking myself some deep questions. And I asked myself, is he my best friend? Is he my fairy tale? Are we compatible? I brought these concerns up to him, and it didn't go well. He ended up silencing me, and we didn't talk for, I think it was about a week. But in that week, I realized that I was not meant to be with him. That he wasn't my fairy tale. That he wasn't my best friend, and... Why do these modern women think men should be their fairy tale? <laughs> he wasn't my Aladdin. I wasn't Jasmine on a magic carpet. Honey, life is hard out here in these streets. Not everybody's gonna be your fairy tale. It just really didn't match up. I had already sent out over 200 save the dates. Jeez. Literally just the week before. Literally. After I decided to break it off with him, I begged him to have a phone call with me where I broke it off. Tom broke I off. I literally canceled our whole relationship. That That's called breaking up? <laughs> canceled our entire relationship like it was a big event? Come on, honey. This was the first time in my life I asked myself what I really wanted and what I really needed and why it was that I said yes when really I didn't know the answer. But actually, I didn't know the answer. I I wanted to say no. That was seven years ago now. What? And now I'm happily married to the love of my life. He is my best friend. He is my fairy tale. And He's my best friend. And we're super compatible. We have been married five years, and the guy that I broke up with, he is also now married to the love of his life. They have a kid together, and I wish them nothing but the best. I don't regret the choice that I made in saying yes because it taught me a lot, and I don't believe in regrets. But I could have saved myself a lot of heartbreak and heartache if I would have been able to ask myself the hard questions, what it is that I really want and what I really need before, and to not just people please and say yes to everything. So ask yourself, where have you been saying yes where you really should be saying no? And maybe where are you saying no when you really should be saying yes? Decisions driven by the mental gymnastics that it takes to even go through these. What I mean, there is some truth to that, though. So I'll, I'll give it to her. I'll give it to her. So as I've gotten older, I've said no to a lot more things. I don't say yes to near as much. But the thing is, when I was saying yes, I was saying yes to opportunities that were going to continue in my career, be obstacles for me to, you know, overcome in my job, in the in my hobbies. Like I used to be a musician, so if somebody just invited me to a gig, I'd be like, "Yeah, I'm down. I'll play any gig. I don't if is it paid, unpaid. I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to me if it's paid, unpaid. I don't care." So there is some truth to that where you do need to say yes, but I think you need to say yes to more or less like opportunities professionally and not just like any girl that wants to date you or any guy that wants to date you. To me, that's kind of dumb, but saying yes to certain opportunities is a good idea, especially when you're younger. But as you get older, you need to understand the power of no. You need to understand your worth. Like the other day, I got I got asked to, to do a birthday party. They're like, yo, man, I'd really love for you to play my birthday party and do a set. And I said, I'm retired. I don't do birthdays no more. Um, it sucked to say no. Um, but it is what it is. You just got to know when to say no. You know what's hilarious? <laughs> Finding out five days before Christmas that the wedding you've been planning for the last year and a half uh, won't be happening as of 11 a.m. this morning. I don't think that's hilarious, but let's laugh for her. <laughs>
I don't think that's funny, though. Because you found him in your house with the girl he told you not to worry about. Ooh. Brutal. Uh Uh-oh. Merry Christmas to me. (laughs) But what's even better than that is what he said to me when I caught him. He said, This isn't what it looks like, baby, no. I thought you said you weren't going to be home until 5.30. Ooh. Baby, you're supposed to be home later, baby. (laughs) It's only three. Why are you here so early, babe? And he has a point. I guess I did say that. Yes, you lied. Brutal. Feel bad for the girl. Maybe I should be grateful because better to find out now than later. But the pain is... This is why you should go see a therapist. Get off of TikTok. Strangely, at the same time, I almost feel nothing. And I'm not sure what to do. I think I'm in shock. I'm definitely in shock. I knew it. I knew it. Anyways, that's my monologue. Um, if you don't mind letting me know in the comments what you thought, if you had any pointers, um, thank you guys so much. For a moment. Get off TikTok. Uh, that's my pointer. I don't know what it is with these women where they, well, I, they're just baiting sympathy is all it is. They bait sympathy. They want other people to feel bad for them. But, you know, at the end of the day, this guy did her dirty. And, you know, I, I don't I don't like it when men do women dirty. I don't think that men should uh, give trauma to these women. She seems like a very sweet girl. I'm going to be honest. She seems very nice. She seems very sweet. She seems very genuine. Um, But sometimes you ladies just pick bad men, and you got to take some accountability with that. Like, the guy is in the wrong 100%, but usually men are only as faithful as their options. I cannot stop thinking about. So y'all know how those podcasts will repost, like, clips of their podcasts on TikTok as a post. And I can't remember these girls' podcasts. It was two girls. Um, I wish I could remember so I could take. Two girls, one cup? (laughs) You guys ever seen that one? Tag them, but if y'all know, tag them. Anyway, it was a girl talking about how like she she turned her friend group around and how she realized that she needed to make new friends and leave some of her old friends behind, right? And in that podcast, you know, it was a good little excerpt. But the thing that she said that really hit me was she said, "How did you know like which friends needed to go?" Basically, <laughs> and she said. Because I was still performing around them. I was like... I mean, it's good. Because I I never had the language around what that, what that feels like. Like, whenever you hang around your good, good girlfriends, you're at ease. Mm-hmm. You can just Be talk yourself. freely. You don't have to worry about, like, filtering what filtering the things that come out of your brain to your mouth like you don't have to worry about that whenever you are with your good good girlfriend and it's because you're not performing it's not performative like you're literally just being yourself in in an authentic way and so she said that she was still performing around these people and i was thinking hey like in what areas of my life am i still performing like obviously it's necessary like at work and stuff like that but like like when you're around your family or whenever you're around like certain friend groups or whenever you're around certain guys or in certain relationships, are you still performing? Do you feel like you can't? Bro, I'm going to keep it a buck. If you were your unfiltered self around everybody, man, you'd probably be in jail. There ain't no way that you can just say whatever you want. A lot of dark thoughts come into people's minds. Sometimes you got to perform. Like if I'm in a bad mood and I know Cass is in a good mood, who am I to bring her down to me? You know what I mean? Like, you got to perform. So I kind of get this, but at the same time, I I think it's kind of childish, like performing. The thing is, is if a friendship isn't serving you anymore and you feel like you got to be fake, that's not a real relationship, then get out. Even if you've known them for a very long time, the good thing about guys is, is we usually keep it very real. And the thing also about guys is we don't talk a lot. You ladies be yapping on the phone all the time, calling every day. We don't really do that as guys. I don't know. Let me know. Chat, do you do that? Do you call your homie every day to talk to him? I talk to my homies on COD. I haven't talked to him for two weeks. We hop on the game and we're just talking about the game. We ain't really talking about life updates, what's going on with your girl. We don't really care about all that. And be your authentic self. Oh, that is a question that really hit home for me. 
It's well known that. Um, also, to this point, I feel like there's a lot of friendships that people have where they feel like they have to like coddle the other friend. Chat, let me know what you think. Like you have to coddle this friend. You have to coddle this person and you have to be like super nice to them. You can't like give them a hard time. You can't call them out. And then they're really not happy for the things that you have going on in your life. That's another one. When you have to coddle them and then also when, they, when they're not genuinely happy for the milestones you're hitting in your life or if you're doing better in your career or something like that, it's like you'll find out who your friends are when you start telling them how good you're doing because a lot of people that are not your real friends, they don't want to see you do better than them. I wish the ladies would stop believing their husbands who say, but I still love you after they cheat. I don't care if anyone hates me after this, but whenever I hear a dude say, just because I cheated on my wife doesn't mean I don't still love her, it makes me instantly want to get into a relationship with him just so I could meet his family and f his dad and then make it really obvious and make it really easy for him to find out so that he confronts me. And as soon as he confronts me, I'm going to say, just because I your dad doesn't mean I don't still love his son. I truly feel like that's the only way these losers will ever comprehend how stupid they sound when they say some shit like that. The very act of cheating is an unloving thing to do. So how delusional and insane do you have to be to do the most unloving thing you could do to your wife? Who you well, because you think it's unloving. Men and women are different. Do we agree? Chat, do we agree? Men and women are completely different. Men will cheat just for the physical Baskin Robbins 31 flavors ideology. Women cheat emotionally, men cheat physically. That's my hot take on it. I believe a man can go out there and buck a chick and have absolutely zero emotional ties. He just wanted to clap the cheeks. But ladies, most of the time when y'all cheat, you're cheating because you see him as a potential partner. Chat, do you agree? Because that's what I think. Because this is why she thinks it's an unloving thing to do, because she's looking at it through the lens of a woman. If you look at what a man's doing through the lens of a woman, you're going to think, wow, he's heartless. Well, it's because we we're more logical. As a creature, as, as a human being, men are more logical. So don't really agree with this take because I think men can cheat physically and women cheat emotionally. Usually women cheat for much different reasons than men do. M men just want that Baskin Robbins. We just want, you got pink hair, I want the girl with the blue hair. You know what I mean? Simple as that. Vowed not to betray. And then now, if you're married, whole, whole different story. But if you're dating, you know, and you're young, like in her 20s, like, bro, everybody gets a pass except for ladies. Y'all don't get a pass. <laughs> you still love her. It gets even more funny when you assess the average male and you realize that the average male does not love himself. And because he doesn't love himself, there's absolutely no... Well, what about what about the average female? Does, does the average female love herself? ...a way he's capable of loving someone else, even if that other person is his wife. And when you understand that, you understand why their idea of love is so twisted and backwards and why they're okay with doing something so unloving to you and then turning around and telling you they still love you. They don't even have the slightest grasp on what it means to love someone, let alone show that through words and actions, and it just shows how disconnected- It's so hard to take a girl serious when she has a pink wig on. <laughs> I'm keep it about, it is so hard to take her serious. There is some truth to that though. I believe you need to love yourself before you love anybody else because if you don't love yourself, what is the person going to come in and actually love in you? So you got to love yourself first. So there is some truth to that. Connected they are when they can turn around and do something so hurtful to the person that they're claiming they love the most. Not to mention that these loser dudes have absolutely no valid reason to cheat on you anyway. The reason is boredom. Maybe it's the wig? It would make so much more sense if they could just say, I cheated on you because I got bored, but I still want to be with you. But the most annoying thing is the way that they will constantly lie and paint their actions out to be something that- Speaking of painting, did you paint your makeup on? <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all are lying too. Y'all are lying too. You wake up every day and put clown makeup on lying and you want us to keep it real? Like, come on, stop it. This woman has makeup on talking about somebody lying. Your entire aesthetic is deception. That you know it's but not. But that's why men lie and women wear makeup. And gaslight you into thinking that they still love you and it was just a one-time thing and it didn't mean anything. If it didn't mean anything, then why did you do it? Because if that's the case, then where does the line get drawn between actions you take that don't mean anything and actions you take that mean something? Is our marriage meaningless? Let me tell you what's going on. I'm not... I mean, once again, I think men and women are just completely different creatures in that regard. I, I just think men can cheat physically and not emotionally, whereas most of the time women, they, they cheat emotionally. 
They're trying to find them a better man. They're trying to find them a better man. But most of the time, dudes are just like, bro, I just want a different flavor. Loki, does somebody want a beef jerky? You want some queef jerky, bud? Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Go to your place. But I mean, that that's just my hot take. And it just goes back to the whole thing of like, we are so much different. Like, we are so much different. A lot of times, guys just want to try something new. And you got to realize, ladies, like, as a guy, we don't get a lot of attention. I mean, chat, unless you do. But personally, for me, I didn't go through life getting a ton of female attention. I got some female attention, but I also shot my shot. I went out of my way to go get attention. I wasn't just, like, standing off being a, a freaking fly on the wall and just waiting for girls to approach me. I went up and approached. I did a lot of cold approaching in high school and college. I shot a lot of shots, just like Michael Jordan. And I missed a ton of shots. I missed way more shots than I actually hit, but I shot a lot of shots. And the and the you know guys that I would be around, they'd, they'd see me and be like, man, Levi, how are you bagging this much? I'm like, dude, because I'm shooting more than you. I'm sending out 100 DMs a day. You're sending out two. How, how do you expect to win as much as me if you're not trying more? Like, I'm trying so much more than you. Of course I'm going to win more. But this woman seems to forget right here, this pink-haired Eon Flux-looking chick. Shots fired! That men don't get a lot of attention. So if a woman comes in and starts giving a man a lot of attention, he's more than likely going to be like, wow, this is a whole new world. A whole new world. And going to think that this girl could be his hero. I can be your hero, baby. So when you get a guy out there, doesn't get a lot of attention, never really does, and then a woman comes in and gives him a lot of attention, he's going to grab on that. He's going to be like, stink on, or stink on shit. Like, fly on poop. We're going to be like, white on rice. We're going to love that. Yes. Let me have some more of that. Because men don't get a lot of attention. Chat, unless you guys did. I knew a guy in high school that would get cold approached a lot, but he was also 6'8", and he looked like a Greek god. But then when he opened his mouth, women really weren't that into him because he didn't have the game. So he would draw them in, and then I'd keep them there with the game. I got really good at the game because I never really was like the best-looking dude. Even now, I think I'm a 6 at best. <laughs> Chat, rate me in the comments. Let me know. What do you think? I'm thinking I'm a six at best. I'm six foot two. I'm 180. I work out a little bit, but if I take my shirt off, you guys are going to be like, oh my God, he's ripped. Eh, I'm okay. I'm not bad. I'm probably sitting around 10, 12% body fat. I'm all right. But you hear me talk. You hang out with me. It's like, oh wow, he's a cool dude. I feel comfortable around him. And that's what women really wanted. Because I think women also want the same things we want. Appearance, personality, and character. Appearance is what gets your attention. Personality is what keeps my attention. And your character is what makes somebody fall for you. But you gotta have all three, and a lot of women go out there and they don't even put the time in the other three or the other two. So the two thirds of the equation, they're at a deficit, thinking, "Why can't I get a good man?" It's because you put all your focus on your appearance. A hundred percent of your focus was on your appearance. Of course, you're not gonna find a dude, because a lot of guys want to look at that for a bit. But as soon as they're done, they're like, "On to the next." So maybe in this scenario where she's talking about this man cheated on him, all she was offering was her appearance. And another girl may may have came in and offered a personality and some character. That's why dudes will cheat on girls that are way more beat than their chick. Chat, let me know if you agree with this. A guy will cheat on a woman that brings him more uh, peace than his actual chick. He'll get a side piece if she brings more peace. You know what I'm saying? Put it on a t-shirt. But a lot of times when dudes are in long-term relationships, a woman is, is not a piece. She's actually a piece of the problem. She doesn't bring a man peace anymore. She brings him a headache. And so a guy will go, Loki, stop scratching your ear, please. We're trying to have a serious monologue here. Okay? Thank you. But a lot of times a guy will cheat just because this girl brings something that his pre or the girl he's with doesn't have. And a lot of times it's the personality and character that he's looking for. Because most women, I'm not going to say all, in general, a lot of women just rely on the fact that they look good. Well, I'm hot. I'm pretty. When they think that's it. No. Being pretty is a prerequisite. You gotta have that coming out the gate. That's why I say being pretty gets you a ticket to the dance. But having a personality and being likable gets you a date afterwards. It's easy to get a ticket to the dance. You can be cute, somebody will take you to the dance. But somebody wants to take you home, more than likely you gotta actually be able to have a conversation with somebody. That's something I wanted when I was looking for Cass, because I was looking for a good woman at the time. I was like 26, 27, I was like, yo, I'm getting a little bit older. I wanna start a family one day, wanna have a wife, but I gotta start vetting now. I know dating in your 30s is very difficult. Saw my mom do it. Saw a lot of other people do it that were older than me. I'm like, uh-uh, absolutely not. It, it only gets harder as you get older. 
because there's more trauma and there's more expectations as people get older and that's from guys and girls when you're younger you put up with a whole lot of crap that you wouldn't put up with in your 30s or your 40s or your 50s chat let me know i know we have a lot of older wiser men here that watch do you think your expectations now as an older man are higher than they were in, in your 20s i think they're definitely going to be higher because the standards have changed your preferences have changed when you were 20 you were like hole in a heartbeat that's all you're looking for you're shallow you don't care she looks good great now you're like i want her to be able to cook i want her to be able to clean i want her to be you know fit feminine friendly cooperative submissive i don't want her to have a whole bunch of kids i don't want her to have a whole bunch of trauma like i want her quaint uplifting elegant empathetic i want her natural i want her nurturing like when you're 20 you're like bro i don't care about none of that is she hot that's all i care about but that's my two cents loki did you have a good time today but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.